All right, guys, so we're here with Addison Bennett. I just learned his name <laughs> from Troma. We got. Hi. Hi. <laughs> and we're on the casting couch. How's y'all's day going? No, just joking. Just joking. So, Addison. Um, right, Addison? Addison, yeah. Okay, just make sure I had that right. No, I'm fucking with you. Uh, but so you work with Trauma? Yes. Um, how long you been with him? Uh, I met Lloyd about three years ago, and I make my own stuff that Troma distributes on my behalf for me. So, I basically, what I do is a show called Troma Masterpiece Theater, and it's like Mystery Science Theater, but uh, we use Troma movies. Oh, I haven't seen that. Maybe, yeah. or, or, or Maybe I've heard of it. I don't yeah, know. yeah, I think I've heard of that. I think I've, because I've looked through their website. Mm hmm You know what I'm saying? Like, seeing what movies they have oh, and yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. Because, um, yeah, Lloyd gave us permission to use his first movie that he ever made called The Battle of Love's Return. And, like, not a whole lot of people even know what that movie is. But he made it when he was 25 in 1971. He uh, he doesn't consider it good. He, he, he was the first person to say it's unwatchable and embarrassing. But he gave it to us to make fun of. So we did. I think that's how a lot of people, their first movie, like their very first, they don't really care for it much. Well, I don't know. See, I mean, with, like, Kevin Smith, he got Clerks, and that movie's a genius, you know, piece of filmmaking. Quentin Tarantino's got Reservoir Dogs, and that one's great. True. But, uh, you know, with Lloyd, though, I think he was just, you know, he was too young and inexperienced, and he just cobbled together this thing. And, uh, yeah, then he went on to make, you know, Troma. But this was years before Troma was even a thing, years oh, yeah. before the Toxic Avenger. Um, but so... Because he knew it would be a challenge, he gave it to us for free to riff on and make fun of Mystery Science Theater style. We had built a talking box of popcorn, we named him Corny, and we had a talking reel of film and named him Really. So for the entirety of Battle of Love's Return, you see us at the bottom in our silhouettes making fun of this horrible movie. What other, uh, what other films have you done like as far as made fun of? Well, it's just been that one for Tro Masterpiece Theater, but I also, before that, did a youtube show called movies to watch on a rainy afternoon and there's about a hundred episodes of that oh wow and it's not the feature length thing it's basically 15 to 20 minute reviews uh compilation of all of the clips sort of the best of the worst clips cut together to make uh a little 15 20 minute video review making yeah. fun of the clips that way and that one's just me there's no silhouettes or puppets or anything but there's like a hundred episodes of that and i've done yeah, I mean, a whole bunch of trauma films uh, like Redneck Zombies, um, Slaughter Party, Star Worms 2, Rabid Grannies, Hectic Knife, BC Butcher, Trauma's War, and uh, Lloyd gave me permission to use all those. And what's that on? YouTube, for free. Yeah, but what, what was the channel? Oh, uh, it's just um, Jab Products, J-A-B Products, okay. and yeah, there's like 119 episodes of movies to watch on a rainy afternoon. And for Masterpiece, it's just one that exists right now, but we're currently working on our second episode and we're using Poultrygeist, which Lloyd also graciously uh, gave us permission to use. Yeah, Yeti just did a review of that on a... We got a thing called Fucked Up Fridays. Okay. Or Yeti does it on That's our a website. Good movie to use. Yeah, and uh, he's like, I didn't re realize... I don't think he realized it was a musical at first. Yeah, that kind of slips its way in there. Yeah, he's up. But it's a really good musical. Yeah, the, the songs are funny, and they're yeah, they're, they're the songs it's are really well funny. made too. It's a nice little discovery about twenty minutes into the thing. That's cool. I haven't seen Poltergeist. You've never no. seen Poltergeist? No, not Poltergeist. No. Are you a, are you a big fan of Troma? I've seen the Toxic Avenger. That's it. Well, a couple. Of them. Oh wow! Have you ever at least seen Toxic Four though? Not sure. That's the best one. Is it though? Yeah, Toxie Four arguably is the best one. I don't know, like from my childhood, it was number one. Well, of course, you know you're gonna have the nostalgic factor for the first one, but the fourth one is, in my opinion, the best because it's the funniest and most offensive. When did it come out? Uh, 2002. Yeah, that's why I haven't seen it. No. Yeah. 2002. I wasn't watching horror movies. Oh well. Yeah. You're gonna have to uh, backtrack and find that one. Yeah, I gotta backtrack on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Trust me. Cause um. You said that you saw the newest Nukem Highs, right? No. Oh, you didn't, you didn't even see either of those? No, didn't oh, get wow. to watch them, no. That's a bummer, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Trust me. No. <laughs> we was here doing uh, Death Breed. It was the same night. Uh, we was doing that premiere for 
Ben and Stacy, we was so we didn't get to go into the movie. That sucks, man. Cause yeah, yeah, I mean, I'll get to watch them eventually somehow. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, but well, I got I, a, I got a lot of movies to catch up good. on. They're good as it's good as a double feature for sure. Like like we was talking uh, in one podcast where we watched forty five to fifty movies a year. Okay. Just for the podcast. Yeah, yeah. And so you got to watch that movie, and then you got to include. All the other movies you want to watch throughout the weeks, and it's like, yeah, you get bogged down by movies. Yeah, it's, it's hard to fit in a whole lot of movies, and I didn't start out with uh, love and horror, so I, it was just an idea. He had oh, a he okay. had a website, and I was like, let's do a podcast. I'm new to horror, because I didn't, I don't, you know. Yeah. But I had a bad experience. I went over that in a podcast. Uh, I watched a movie when I was like 13 or 14, and it was just like, fuck this shit. <laughs> like the quality was too bad, or uh, no, the the, the movie the movie was too messed up for you. Yeah, it was a. Uh, They're in a mental institute, and a dude was like playing a game of truth or dare, and he's like, "I dare you to saw your leg off with this hacksaw." Okay. And then the other one was, and he dudes just starts sawing his fucking leg off. Do you remember the name of it? No, I have no, no clue. I don't know what you're talking. I don't know what movie that is, but it yeah, sounds interesting. And, and dude was like, "I dare you to put this grenade in your mouth and pull the pin," and then. Just, that sounds really familiar to me. He's like, I, I don't dare know what you that to, is, though. He's like, I dare you to kiss me and this one girl. Wait, and was it called Truth or Dare? I Maybe? have no fucking clue, dude. And she threw up this white shit in his mouth. <laughs> and I was like, fuck horror movies. I'm never watching one again. Okay. Well, but I mean, then I still watched horror movies, right. but I didn't watch. Like, that was just too extreme. I just fucking fell out of it. You know, I seen Scream and whatever the fuck. I know what you did last summer. Well, those are tame. Yeah, you know, like, I, like I, I, yeah. I stepped back from... Cause like, cause I seen Troma or you know like Toxic Avenger. When Those I, movies are pretty extreme too. Troma but it, movies. I don't know. I in seen a goofy it, way. Yeah, I seen it when I was a kid, and I don't even know why I got to watch it. But I, I, I'm, I'm sure I saw it when I was. And we rewatched it uh, a month or two ago, and I was like, this movie still holds up, and it's exactly the same movie I remember watching as like, like a ten or eleven year old kid. If you think the first one is crazy, the number four is that times a thousand. I gotta watch number four. <laughs> you, you, you got number four on you? I don't know. You mail me number four? I mean, you're working with trauma. You can get free deep. No, I'm just fucking with you. I think, you know, I mean, if you have a uh, a Troma Now account, are you familiar with Troma yeah. Now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it might be on there. They, oh, they're a big chunk of their library is on there. You know, you just got to pay the $5 a month, and you can just go through the library. You got Shudder? I don't, no. I, I, I just have, like, Netflix and uh, the Troma Now and stuff. I, I, I'm a physical media collector. I just buy stuff. I don't really like to stream that much. So what else do you do for trauma? Well, I travel with them to conventions and stuff, and I help. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I uh, volunteer at the booth at various horror cons and sell stuff on their behalf, and then they let me sell my stuff there, um, a sort of a you know, 50-50 thing. Where it's like, you know, I get to sell my thing, but I'm also working for them that weekend, too, helping them sell their stuff. So we both win. Yeah, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Where's the craziest uh, convention you've been at? craziest or like you know oh i mean i got most busy like horror hound any any horror hound weekend is typically pretty nuts i've gone to like cincinnati and indianapolis i I bounce back and forth between those two because they do they do them both in a year and there was one i went to last year where a guy was so drunk after hours that uh, he got (laughs) ejected from the hotel oh shit he was he i think they cut off his drinks and he had uh, was escorted out of the building by security. So he turned around and tried to swing a punch at uh, one of the security guards. But, I mean, it was such a big distance between him and the yeah. security guard that he completely missed the guy. But he had put all his weight into the punch that he just threw himself onto the ground, That's so hit the curb, knocked himself out, and ambulance had to take him away. They couldn't, I mean, I don't and really know what happened to him, but, I mean, he knocked that's, himself out. That's pretty cold. much what he deserved, though, probably. I, know. I mean, yeah. like, when you're that drunk, hopefully he w- woke up and was like, yeah, that's never going to happen again, but probably not. Yeah, I don't know. We, No one knew who he was. He wasn't with anybody. So it was just yeah, a bizarre... He just come out there all fucked up. Just yeah, like, who just goes to a horror convention and gets crazy drunk and then picks a fight with security? Like, you're going to lose... And then to knock yourself out and not have someone there with you to like, yeah, like bail you out of, or get you out of the hospital, take care of you in any way. Like I don't know what his story was. That's funny. That'd be. It was crazy. It was I was standing right there and I saw the whole thing. Damn. And the uh, the loud thunk of like head hitting pavement was insane. You ever been to Texas Frightmare? I have not. No. I hear that one's pretty good. I've never been there either. Yeah, the ones I typically go to are Horror Hound, 
and I've done um, Cinema Wasteland a couple times. That's in Ohio. And that's actually my favorite convention just because it's all about independent filmmaking. Oh, and the, cool. the guests that you usually have there are like people who are very like cult. And you know, Horror Hound is like you know, Walking Dead actors and like yeah. big name guys, Robert Englund, Bruce Campbell. But you're shelling out like $100 for these people's autographs. Nope. 50 to 100 bucks. It's a lot of money. But you go to Cinema Wasteland and you can meet people like Lynn Lowry or um, like Linnea Quigley. Um, people who you would think would charge anywhere yeah. between 50 to 100 bucks, but you're only paying them like $20 each. And you, yeah. you can accumulate a mass number of, you know, autographs or selfies and stuff. It's awesome. Yeah, that's like here at the Full Moon Tattoo and Horror Festival. And, yeah. and you can sit there and talk to them. You're not ushered. You right. pay no, 100 there, bucks no to be ushered line. through a line. It's not, you don't pay your 100 bucks, have like four seconds of talk yeah. time, and then you're gone. That shit right there sucks. I don't understand. Like to pay 100 bucks just to get a photo op. And then you'll someone, get to talk to them, yeah. It's just not. I mean, I don't understand it, but hey, for anybody that loves autographs and pictures, good oh, well, for you, if, you I'm, know? if I'm paying that kind of money, I want some time with them. Like, yeah. Um, you should be able to sit down and have a drink with them for a hundred fucking dollars. So. Yeah, something. Because I mean, I'm, granted, they might make you drink that drink really, <laughs> really fast. Right. The yeah. thing is, if you happen to go to a convention where you know maybe they're going to go hang out at a bar or yeah, something so after, yeah, that's what you you wait for that. Wait yeah. for the opportunity to maybe sneak up on them after hours when they're kind of hanging out, and then say like, "Oh, hey, how's it going?" Uh, and then maybe you can get something better out yeah, of it. That's what's good if you find out what hotel or if it's at a hotel. Some of them just hang out, you know. Some yeah, of them, yeah, they'll they'll go down to the bar like the Sid night Hague before. And Bill Mosley or yeah. Ken Forey, they'll just hang out with everyone afterwards, and you can get like selfies at the bar. Yeah, like uh, even the night before, because you know they've flown in. Right. Yeah. And, and they're going to be have there some, for a day already. Yeah, they're going to have some sort of little. Like get together before that night, you know. And yeah. if you show up at the bar, they're going to be there hanging out and shooting the shit. Uh, so we had gone awesome. to uh, Days of the Dead in Indianapolis like two years ago, and I remember as soon as I got there and I was checking in, I happened to look over and at the same table, I saw Ken Forey, Sid Haig, and Bill Mosley all at the same table just eating burgers. And that was, that was the first time I'd ever seen any of them in person. Oh, wow. So, like, to see them hanging out and chatting and just, like, eating like normal people, it was like, holy crap, you know, fan geek moment. And then you can't rush over. I did not want to do that because it was just, well, like... What you should have done was just got your camera out, make sure the flash was on, and then take a picture. I mean, I have a... It's, it's so in my know. head forever. It's a mental no, image. It's, it's not going anywhere, but... Uh, It'd be like you just walk by and the flash goes off. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Oh, my God. No, you look whoops. like the biggest yeah. fucking idiot. My, my bad. I missed... <laughs> my mistake. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fun. So, what else do you do? I mean, like, with all of this trauma stuff, like... Well, I mean, it's been movies to watch on a rainy afternoon. It's kind of been my own thing that I've done for about seven years now with 119 episodes. And there's, you know, at least seven episodes of that is Troma. And then I did Masterpiece Theater, and that took me about two years to make and put together. And oh, wow. Two, how long is it? It's about 87 minutes. Oh, cool. Yeah, Actually, yeah. it didn't take me two years. It took me about a year and it's existed for two years now. Yeah. But um, I was actually just in New York two nights ago because it had a big New York premiere. Oh, sweet. Hell yeah. yeah, dude. That's awesome. Thank you. That is awesome. Uh, and where can people purchase that? Or, or um, is it on, uh, it, well, it's on YouTube for free, but if you want copies, it's, you can buy one on eBay, you know, just from Masterpiece Theater. Um, or contact me through social media, you know, Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. I got them all, and you can get a copy for 10 bucks. What's your uh, Instagram? And it's just my name, just Addison Binnick. Just all one? Just all one, yeah. Addison Binnick. Yep. That's his name. I learned that. <laughs> I got his name down. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's on Troma now as well. You know, if you subscribe, you're five bucks a month. You can watch it there, too, amongst all the other Troma stuff. And then right now, yeah, we're just working on Poultry Geist as our next episode. It's taken another year to sort of, like, get everything going and piece it all together. We're not anywhere near being done yet, but um, that's just a work in progress. And then our other big project that we're working on simultaneously is a feature film called Psycho Ape. Oh, wow. Which is um, just a joke kind of progress or project, but it's going to be like 75, 80 minutes long. And it's about a gorilla that escapes from the Detroit Zoo and goes on a killing spree. And we're shooting it for like 100 bucks. You know, we're shooting on tape, VHS tape. 100 bucks. Well, we're going to pay more for, like, actors and stuff and actresses, but so far we've already shot, like, two, three hours of footage, and we've spent less than $100. And 
And on VHS? On VHS, yeah. Um, we want to make it like dirty and grimy and grindhouse yeah. looking. And I feel like the most authentic way to do that is to actually shoot it that way. Are you going to digitize it after? Well, yeah. I mean, well, we feed it into the computer yeah. and we, we cut the film that way, but it, it was shot on tape. And, That's uh, crazy. So it has this really old look to it. And it's literally just a gorilla Halloween costume that uh, we have repurposed into our killer gorilla. And it's supposed to be a real gorilla, but it is just clearly a guy in a gorilla yeah, costume. Yeah, I get, I get, it's like a joke. It's a joke. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I whenever get he it. turns around, the costume isn't even like buttoned up all the way so you can see his undershirt. <laughs> <laughs> and for every time that like, there's a shot like that where maybe like the gorilla arm sleeve like went down so you can see like his you know actual human arm it's like use that take use that shot put that all in there i want the mistakes um the guy who was shooting the movie for me uh greg deliso he made the movie That's hectic funny. knife which is a trauma release but uh he, when he shoots the film he edits it too and i'll go and hang out with him and i'll i'll tell him like use these shots where it's like the flaws you know yeah maybe he'll pan over too far and he'll see like my shoe in his shot like when i shouldn't be in the shot because we're like having a kill scene and then you'll see my shoe at the bottom of the screen it's like no use that take i want that in there use all the flaws let's let's fully embrace the fact that this movie you know is super cheap on vhs tape and the effects cost nothing the that, most money yeah we spent, I, I get the i mean because it's a yeah. running gag it's like it's, yeah, it's these people are gag. shooting a film but they don't know how to shoot a film yeah exactly but if people don't know that it's gonna basically look like an amateur. Yeah. Well, if it's, if it's, as if a bunch of like, yeah, maybe like inexperienced filmmakers got together, but like I have experience with movies, uh, he has experience with movies, he's made a feature length movie, but so the shot look good, we're gonna have the sound sound good, but the effects cost like a nickel, you know? Yeah. It's gonna yeah, be like funny. fake I blood, agree. you know, people getting their legs cut off by bananas, which is totally illogical and doesn't yeah. make doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, but. Uh, we are going to enlist actors and actresses and have them have cameos. And it just won't make any sense. Like, what are these, like, famous people doing in this movie that uh, was shot on tape? It's a killer gorilla movie shot on tape. But, like, what's this person doing here? Like, they have no business being in this movie. This kind of film. They're much better than this. But uh, a lot of people have expressed interest. And, uh, you know, I also pay them. Well, it's like if people would do that movie 41 or whatever. Oh, him. Yeah. Uh, Did you ever watch that movie? Was it movie Forty One? I think yeah. With like, was a bunch of skits. Yeah. With, like God. Hugh Jackman Did you and Halle. Try to watch that. Oh, I've sat through it. It's horrible. It's fucking horrible. Yeah, it's a bad one. Like, I almost got to the end of it, and I was like, "Fuck this." I think a lot of those people just did that movie as a favor to the filmmakers because they had they were like friends with them. Oh wow. Because I just the- thought it was just like a joke. Like, let's just do it just because it's fucking stupid. No, no, I think uh, because there was the Fairley Brothers who did it, and they did like oh, yeah. Dumb and Dumber, and Me, Myself, yeah. and Irene, and there's something about Mary. So I think those guys just kind of called in favors, like, do you want to come be in this, or can you come be in this, please? You know, no one else wants to well, be I think, in though, there. too, the actors got to do something that they don't normally get to do. Right, yeah, something like, crude, yeah, or disgusting, you know, yeah, or you know, stupid. Like stupid, like... But it was bad, it's... But they don't get to do that, so it's like, well, fuck it, you know? True. Like, I want to do different stuff, like, I'm always doing the action, I'm always, well, let's have fucking balls on my chin. Right. I mean, that's a pretty embarrassing, though, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not something you dipping it in the soup. Not something you probably should do on no. camera. <laughs> it's there forever. I know. Yeah, I don't think see they'll that. ever lose that footage. No, that movie's like, not going anywhere, unfortunately, for them and us as the audience. So, uh, when do you expect to, the eight movie to? Uh, we probably won't be done for another year. I mean, we will be shooting a huge chunk of it this summer. We're gonna go to New York City and have the ape chase our lead actress through the middle of Times Square. Oh God, um, that'll be great. And, uh, yeah, so, well, that'll be filming a large portion of it, and then basically some pickup stuff later on in the fall, and we kind of edit as we go, but we want, like, a final product done, shot, and edited probably a year. That ain't too long. I mean, no, really. No, no, no. We, we've been filming basically every Thursday since March, and we call it Psycho Ape Thursdays, and so people come from out of town, and we shoot kill scenes with them. You all shoot it here? Or where are you shooting it at? Uh, Detroit. That's where I'm from. Oh, cool, cool. So we have we invite people to come from all over the place. I've shot with people from Ohio, Indiana, Tennessee. They come to us. We'll shoot a cameo with them, put them in the movie, and then they'll just you know go back home the next day. 
and they'll be in this movie forever. And uh, you know, we try to we just improvise the scenes. They show up 15 minutes later. We have a, we write with them, write a little script, you know, notes, and off we go. And uh, you know, it's just been really fun and kind of improvising the movie as we go. Are you able to drop any names that are going to oh, be? Yeah, totally. Um, are you familiar with Kansas Bowling? She uh, made a film a couple years ago when she was 18, and it got picked up by Troma called BC Butcher, and it was shot on legitimate like 16 millimeter film, oh and uh, yeah, she made it when she was 18 years old, raised Damn. the funds herself, yeah. um, and she's actually going to be in the new Quentin Tarantino movie that's coming out next month, so she's playing one of Charles Manson's like you know family members yeah okay, okay. so we're hoping i don't know who she is but yeah okay keep an eye out for her or google her later yeah um you know she made her little movie and then she blew up you know and now oh, yeah. she's you know, ain't nothing wrong with that so we're lucky in that we feel like wow we, we get to work with someone who's worked with tarantino and all this stuff like that's pretty nuts oh yeah that's cool that's real cool and then um have you seen sergeant kabuki man do you know that film Mm-mm. that's a trauma film as well it's uh basically the more family-friendly version of Toxic Avenger. But uh, just the other day when I was in New York for my Masterpiece Theater premiere, the actor who was the main villain in Sergeant Kabuki Man, uh, he was there because they also they played Sergeant Kabuki Man first and then my movie. But he was there in attendance, and we hit it off, and he wants to be in Psycho 8. So oh, that's he's cool. 79 yeah. years old. He's been in 70 films, according to IMDb. He worked on Batman Forever and was telling me about all the behind-the-scenes drama that happened between Joel Schumacher, Tommy Lee Jones, and uh, Jim Carrey. He was there and got to see it all, and so he's telling me all these stories, and I'm like, well, I'm shooting a movie. So I showed him some footage thinking, like, but he won't think anything of it, but he was like, I want in, you know? When you come back to New York, let me know. So, you know, he's Hell someone yeah. we'll throw in the movie as a cameo. That's cool. Fuck yeah, so man. Any, any cameo that, you know, if anybody wants to come have fun with us, open invitation. Open invitation. Get a hold of you. <laughs> yeah, we'll put you in the movie. We'll kill you off. You, you, have, to, you have to go to Detroit, though. Right. Well, if we, we, or New York. We will be filming in New York from June 19th until June 23rd. So that's our window to be back in New York. And we'll film all, all those days. And if anybody happens to be in New York and wants to join, you know, we'll be there. But otherwise, yes, we will We mainly just shoot in Detroit. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So uh, anything else you got going on? or? Uh, basically just those projects, just from Masterpiece Episode 2 with Poultry Geist and Psycho Ape. And I uh-huh. kind of go back and forth. Sweet. So uh, give out your social media again, Addison. It's Addison Binnick. You know, that's just that's just my full name on, you know, Facebook. Everything. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to keep it simple. Yeah. Well, Addison Binnick. All right, man. Appreciate you being on. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. All right, guys. So as Addison, uh, I don't know, go check out teenhorror.com. Fuck Jim Dam.